twice yesterday and once again this morning, the crowds in St. Peter's Square, at moments more than 100,000 strong, gazed in disappointment at the black smoke coming out of the insignificant-looking chimney atop the Sistine Chapel. Three rounds of voting, two ballots each time, and the 111 cardinals in conclave still had not made their choice. John Paul I had been chosen on the first day of voting, but those who knew their papal history realized that that was an exception that usually it takes several days, and there was no telling how long it would be before a candidate received the necessary 75 votes, the two-thirds majority plus one. Then, at 18 minutes past six on this warm Rome evening, the chimney came to life again. Just a few puffs of smoke, very little compared with what had come pouring out the other times, but unmistakably white. When Senior Cardinal Deacon Pericle Felici announced the name of the new pope, most of those in the square couldn't quite catch it. They had been listening for names like Papalardo or Ursi, Pinedoli or Colombo. This name didn't even sound Italian. Wojtyla. Karol Wojtyla of Poland, the first non-Italian pope in more than four and a half centuries. The papal name he had chosen, John Paul II. The Vatican's Swiss Guard and Italian military units standing by for this moment marched into the square, adding martial sound and bright colors to the floodlit scene. But after the initial excitement, the crowd seemed more subdued than the one that had greeted the naming of Albino Luciani, who became John Paul I a little over seven weeks ago. One Italian asked for his impression by a Vatican radio reporter summed up the feeling of many. He said, after so many Italian popes, it takes a while to get used to the idea. An American in the crowd was less hesitant. This demonstrates the universality of the church, he exulted. When the new pope stepped out on the balcony to give his blessing, the cheering became intense. And as he spoke, in good Italian and down-to-earth phrases, it echoed ever more strongly across the great square. The new bishop of Rome, he said, speaking of himself, has been called from a distant land, Yet it is a land nearby in terms of communion and of faith in Christian traditions. He said he was afraid at first to accept this nomination, but he said, I have done so in the spirit of obedience to the Lord and of confidence in our mother, the Virgin Mary. He started to say, I speak in your language, then corrected himself, I speak in our Italian language. If I make mistakes, you will correct me. Italians in the crowd laughed. Like John Paul I, many thought, here is another pope who can smile. Bert Quinn, CBS News, Vatican City.